In this Dragonfly 3 training video, we're going to take a look at the Macro Engine. The Macro Engine is a tool that allows Dragonfly users to record sequences of actions so that that sequence of actions can be reapplied on other datasets later. This allows users to build robust and highly reproducible workflows. For the purpose of this demonstration, we're using a dataset of a CT scan or a micro CT scan of a mouse femur, and this dataset was shared courtesy of Tim Ryan at Penn State. In order to get started, we're going to use Dragonfly's macro player and recorder to record a sequence of actions where we take this small blue region of interest and segment it into bone and marrow space, and we're going to record that. When you want to use the macro recorder, you can go to Tools, Macro Player. Here, you'll find a drop-down list with all of the pre-recorded macros, but if you're starting from scratch, you won't have any macros there. You also have the plus button, which allows you to create a new macro file. So I will call this one Segment Bone, and I will leave it in the current user position, although I could leave it available for all users who log onto this computer. I can either create file or create file and start recording, in which case the macro player engine will start recording right away. At this point, the engine is recording everything I do in the Dragonfly user interface. So if I create new regions of interest, if I delete regions of interest, or load image channels, all of those sorts of actions get recorded and captured and encoded into the macro. What we're going to do is we're going to take this region of interest where I've just painted some of the pixels blue, and we're going to first, with that selected, we're going to tell Dragonfly to perform a split at O2. This is going to split this one region of interest into two new regions of interest. So if I hide the source, we can see we have a new region of interest, which is the foreground. Now I can't really see the color very well, so I'll change the color. We'll make it uh, a bright green will be fine. And we can see that that's the foreground or the bone, so I'll rename this bone. And the rest of the region of interest was split into the background, which is the remainder of the pixels. We don't need that, so we'll delete it. And we'll also delete the source. Now keep in mind that all of these actions are being recorded. So changing the color, delete, renaming the foreground, deleting the background, deleting the source, all of those are captured and encoded in the macro. Now for my next goal, I'd like to segment the marrow space in here. And we can do that in a three-step process by making a copy of the bone filling it in and then subtracting the original from the filled in. I'll show you. If I select bone, I can make a copy. I'll turn on the visibility of the copy and with the copy selected I'll tell Dragonfly to do a fill along the z-axis. You can see that's filled in. Now if I select the copied and I do a control click to select the original bone, I now have boolean operations including an A minus B. You can use the A minus B and then you can use it to overwrite one of these or you can tell it to create a new destination result. So when I click A minus B, we say let's create the destination. We'll call this marrow and we'll give it another color. So we'll give it a, a blue color to contrast with the green. And when we click OK, it computes the difference. And if we show it, now we're seeing it. I'll delete the filled in copy. And now we have two regions of interest, marrow and bone. I'm going to, at this point, stop the macro recorder, and what we have is a sequence of actions. So all of the deleting and renaming ROIs, the changing colors, the subtraction, all of those steps are encoded and recorded, even the first step, which was running the split at Otsu. Sometimes when you click a single button in Dragonfly, it may be encoded as multiple steps. In the case of split at Otsu, we have to create an instance of the progress bar to monitor the progress and then delete the progress bar afterwards. So you see there are multiple steps for this. Some of the other steps just or some of the other actions only encode a single step. So we have a recorded macro. I'm going to close this for a moment. If I delete my uh, regions of interest here and I create another region of interest and we'll uh, go ahead and paint this region of interest and I'll paint it up here and I'll create another region of interest. We'll make this one yellow and I'll paint this region of interest down here. Now I'll call the yellow lower, it appears lower on my screen, and I'll call the pink upper. Now if I want to run the macro I can go back to tools, macro player, 
and when I select from the drop-down list we see the segment bone. In the macro player itself there's a lot of behavior. So you'll see all of the steps and you can scroll through the steps. Next to each step you'll see a delete button if you want to delete that step from the macro. You'll also see an execute status indicator. Over here this execute status tells us that this, st this step is set to execute. There's also a pause step. If you set any of these, for example, as pause, then when Dragonfly gets to that step in the workflow, it will stop and wait for the user to affect any actions before clicking proceed. The third execute state is skip. If you don't want to change the color, for example, you could just tell this step to be skipped outright. So you have the execute step, you have the delete. You also have the ability to change the name of a particular step. So the names that you see here, those are the Python commands that the macro player actually calls. There's a method called split at Otsu. But you can change what appears here to make it easier for the user. So you may want to say uh, automatic thresholding of the source ROI. And we can put in the more details that this will create a background ROI which will be deleted, create a foreground ROI which will be renamed bone. So you can change these names uh, around and make it easier for the user to read. If you make the changes you can click save and tell it to overwrite and now those changes are persistent. Likewise if you change the execute step and you do a save it will still be persistent. If you want to look at the source code for this macro, and that's beyond the scope of this demonstration, but you can at any time click the PY button, in which case it'll open this macro, which is segmentbone.py, in a Python source editor, if you have one configured on your operating system. That is, if you have Windows set so that .py files get opened up by your Python editor, then you'll see this file and you can edit the Python directly. So we have this macro. Um, the record button will allow us to overwrite. This button allows us to play one step at a time. This button allows us to play all the way through the macro and it will only stop if you hit a pause state or if it hits a step where it doesn't know which input it should process. So for example if we click this button it executes and it gets to this step and it says I'm supposed to analyze an ROI but, I, but it, the user has two ROIs upper and lower. So in this case, we can say, ah, well, I'd like to process the lower, and so I'll set lower, and then tell it again to proceed through all steps. Now it's executing all steps. It's going too quickly for me to narrate what's happening, but it has taken that region of interest. It has split it with Otsu into a foreground and background. We took the foreground, renamed it to bone, deleted the background, deleted the source. Then we took the foreground bone, duplicated it, did a fill in and a subtraction, and ended up calling the difference marrow. So the whole thing got processed and executed. So the Dragonfly macro engine works like this in that you can record sequences of actions and then you can play them back. The macros themselves can be used across different data sets. You can share the macros with other users if you want. You could do it by emailing or you could even just uh, upload it directly to Dragonfly's infinite toolbox. So that gives you an introduction to the macro engine for storing and replaying sequences of actions to make your workflows more reproducible and more robust.